Hey developers, this is Eric and this is Program with Eric. I just want to show you guys a quick video on some cool courses on Udemy. So this right now, Udemy is having a sale and I just wanted to see which top courses they recommend just through their flash sale on top rated courses only. So let's take a look. Let's type in web development. And you can see here, this actually course, this flash sale ends tonight, but uh, when you watch this video, there's probably another sale coming up. Udemy has sales every few days, uh, usually once, a few times a month, I should say. Um, so if you guys are interested, I have links below to some of my favorite courses. If you buy any course through those links, I get a few bucks. So that's full disclosure. So I'm a proud Udemy affiliate. So I put in web development. Uh, some of the courses they recommend is Beginning Full Stack Web Development, HTML, CSS, React, and Node by, uh, it looks like Mark Price. They have Full Stack Web Development, which, let's take a look at this one. So this is an Eduonics learning solution. So that's why it doesn't have an instructor name. This is another really crazy, huge course. I've heard people talk about this one, I think. I might review this one. It's 33 hours, so I want to I want to ask you guys. Uh, put in the comments below sh what course out of the ones I'm showing you today would you want me to do next? So I haven't bought this course, but I, I just want to kind of poke around and see what it looks like. If you've never looked through Udemy, this is kind of the things you probably want to take a look at, like how long the course is. Usually five or six hours is normal, but some of these crazy ones that are 33 hours, like the uh, Cold Steel course, by the way, which is a link in the description. That uh, those are pretty outstanding and special. But you can see here this goes over HTML5, CSS3, Twitter Bootstrap. You can see this is a little bit older because Twitter Bootstrap people usually don't refer to it. Twitter Bootstraps do they just call it Bootstrap? And I've seen people kind of shy away from teaching that in some of the beginner courses. So that's interesting. jQuery. Once again, that makes me feel like this is an older course, has Meteor JS in it, which once again is a little bit older. And I bet you this is Angular JS, not Angular 2 Plus. So I would probably say this has a lot of content, but that's a lot of old content, uh, which isn't great. Like I said, they also have PHP. So this is interesting. It feels like a little bit of an older course. It said it was updated uh, over a year ago. So this might, might be one I wouldn't do, but it's 33 hours. I mean, who knows? Let's see what else do we have in here that's top rated. So let's take a look. Spinner, full stack development, HTML, CSS, React, and Node by Mark Price. And uh, kind of nice. I see ES, ES6 and React right away. That's helpful. It's been updated in, in February of this year. That's really nice. It has 25 hours of content. And so yeah, tons, it looks like another great course, look tons of information in there. You have CSS. Let's take a look at what we have in here. Git, it's always good to have a little bit of Git. Bootstrap 4, that's nice because a lot of older courses teach Bootstrap 3 or like that other one that still mentioned it as Twitter Bootstrap. You can tell that's a really old one. Creating a login portal, Skit or Die website, that's cool. So it kind of gives you the little bit of both. Some people like just going over each piece of information that you're trying to learn. Some people like creating a real uh, project. So it looks like you get both of that in this. Node, Mongo, REST, and APIs. You know, Mongo used to be huge. I just don't think Mongo is as big as it used to be. A lot of people moved over to Postgres. I mean, everybody talked about the mean stack and, and all these different stacks that were using Mongo, but I know it's probably good to learn because it's just a really simple uh, kind of database to learn. Intro to React. So this is cool. You know, I would be curious to see if if they're kind of a version or two back in React. Are they using ES6 classes? It's really hard. It says ES6 in React. So maybe they are. So this would be interesting to see how like out of date they are. I think they're probably pretty new. So this one looks interesting. It might be a good one I could review in the future. Let me know below if that sounds interesting. Let's take a look at another one. So this is another one, build 15 projects. And this is course development Island UK. So not a person, it's some company and hasn't been updated in a while, which could be okay. Usually something actually, excuse me, 2018. So it has just been updated. So that's good news. Let's see here. 
and it's 67 and a half hours of content. That's so crazy. You can buy courses for $12 and get, you know, three days worth of content, literally like that much. But, you know, is it really that good? I mean, you could, I mean, first off, these huge, long, super long courses that are over like two days long, you got to think, is this really like who has time to really watch 70 hours? I mean, probably not many people. I mean, you have to be pretty hardcore to be able to, to do that. I mean, I would almost want to have a, a shorter course for like maybe five to 10 hours, but teaches me everything that I could have learned in 70 hours. So there is at a point, there's something, there's at, at some point there's uh, you lose a little bit of efficiency <laughs> and you just don't know how well each one of these courses are. But I mean, it looks like it has a ton of information. Once again, Twitter bootstrap, which might be a little bit of older one. This could be one where they just keep adding more and more stuff to it as time goes on. So online notes. I mean, it has pretty good course reviews. A lot of people like it. Let's see what else you get. So this is interesting. You even get a little bit of iOS and Android application. You jQuery mobile that that's kind of a red flag there. jQuery mobile. I have not heard good things about that and I would not use it. So that's that's kind of a bad sign. Some of these other ones might be more interesting. I mean, you got to learn jQuery. Let, let's face it. If you're a new web developer, you probably should learn jQuery. I'm not super think it's important. I'd rather you learn the basics of using document and, and do everything with plain old JavaScript. But you are going to run into jo many, many jobs that still use jQuery. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, you know, I, I think you get a lot for this. It might be worth just to try it out for $12. But from what I could see from the course curriculum, I'm not too impressed. I mean, I could be completely wrong if I jumped into this course. Uh, but my gut says this is not great. So let's move on. And once again, if you disagree, let me know if, or if someone's taken that course. Let's take a look at Learn JavaScript for Web Development. Advance your web development skills by learning JavaScript from JavaScript experts by Erfrin Diane. So he's Turkish, auto-generated English. Okay. So eight and a half hour content. So, you know, I kind of like, sometimes I like smaller courses like this, like five to 10 hours, because you kind of get all the information you need right in one place. You don't have to watch 70 hours. So like getting started with JavaScript, I, I like this. I like going over the basics. Uh, that has a coding exercise variables, arithmetic assignment operators, kind of real basics, JavaScript stuff, data types and objects. I don't know if they have closures in here, but that would be like fundamental that so you should probably learn. I don't know if it's in here. I don't see it. Uh, work and understand browser object model. Interesting. I like this a little bit deeper into the, to the Windows object. I like that more. Uh, working and understanding document object model. Definitely, I like that more. I, I could see people using that. Events. Uh, this seems like a good solid like basics of JavaScript course and then ties it into your browser, which is good. So you're not just getting learning variables, but you're learning like how it how you how it works in your browser. Uh, so interesting. I mean, this is definitely a lot different than some of the other courses. It doesn't look like you actually create JavaScript errors. It doesn't look like you create a project in this one. You might be just learning little bits and pieces at a time. I guess they do have a JS overlay menu project. So maybe this is the project. I don't know. So at least it has maybe one hour worth of project. This seems interesting. And like this, this piques my interest. It doesn't look like the normal, like let's just dump you into CSS and HTML and do 10 different projects. And I'm going to teach you jQuery. This is interesting. This might be something worth reviewing at some point. Let's keep going. Let's take a look at a couple more. So these are, once again, if you're listening, I'm doing a look at some of the considered top web development courses that Udemy is pointing me to that they're giving a discount on. And if you guys are interested, once again, I have links to a bunch of courses that I recommend. And if you don't see one of the courses here, but you want to still support the channel, just click on any of the courses I have listed in the links below and then just buy a course. Um, I actually still get credit for any course you buy as long as you click on my link first within the first, I don't know, 24 hours. Let's see, running a web development business, the complete guide. This is, this is different by Evan Kimbrell. 
it was recently updated, has lots and lots of students. I like it's more of a business. This is interesting. 11 hours, two articles. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to watch the course review. So the essentials, how to pick a stack. I like this. So maybe this is kind of combining, not just jumping into learning CSS and JavaScript and HTML. It takes a little bit, a step back to like figure out what you should do first. And it looks like maybe we have more of a contracting bend on this one if you want to be a contractor. Good, fast, cheap. That's always, this is the interesting concept. Uh, this applies to a lot of things in life. You can either have things that are good um, or you can do it fast or you can do it cheap. You have to pick two. Um, usually you can have something, you can create something that's good and fast, but it's not going to be cheap or you can have something that's cheap and fast, but it's not going to be good. So that's, that's an interesting idea there. To niche or not to niche, type of subcontractors. Then once again, the 80-20 uh, is awesome. Um, the Pareto law, I believe. Look at other studios. Find a template and template. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. That doesn't sound right. I guess there's he's giving an idea of being a contractor. If you don't want to do the design, you can download templates from Template Monster. There's, especially if you're doing WordPress, that's really easy. You can even get uh, ones from HTML5 from Three Forest and Template Monster. Template Monster. So I, I, yeah, I'd recommend that too, especially if you're not into design. Oh, so this is kind of interesting. Then he talks about how to get into e, uh, subcontracting, setting up Elance. This is all good stuff. Upwork, uh, almost everybody I know. There's so many digital agencies out there that, or contractors, that it's just them. And then they manage the project and they just do all the work from people they find on Upwork. It's actually a pretty easy business model. And if you get good at contracting and you get good at finding clients, you can make good money that way. Um, the, obviously the hardest part of all this is finding clients. Um, getting the work on Upwork, it's hit and miss. You, it's kind of an art work. It's an art form to find good people. Like anything else, when you're hiring someone, you have to make sure that they actually know what they're doing, that they're going to show up and, and do the work. And then a lot of this is, and hopefully as a section on this, is building, yeah, getting clients. You kind of have to have a whole section on that because that is an art form in itself of trying to like email all the contacts you know. Some people use Craigslist. Some people just use Upwork. You can you look for your clients on Upwork. Plus you also look for the work on Upwork. So you, or not work, but get the people that you need to, the developers from Upwork. You could do both. Uh, this is this is good. I like these these strategies. I you know I haven't seen too many courses on this, although I haven't searched. I'm sure Udemy has a ton of these, but this seems to be one of the higher late rated ones. Uh, I should do a video series on freelancing. I've done uh, some freelancing in the past, quite a bit of freelancing, and you know I have some horror stories and I have some some cool things and some things that work for me and some things that didn't work for me. That might be an interesting video series I can do in the future. If anybody's interested, let me know. Types of proposals, components of proposals, times of estimates. Very interesting. Managing clients. Confidence is key. Yeah. So this is really doing the work is the easy part. Managing the clients, finding the clients, building proposals. That That is much more difficult. And if you don't do this right, you can end up spending a lot of time and get paid very little for it. Yeah, this is, I kind of want to review this one. I think this would be a fun one to go through and just deep dive into. So that's Running Web Development Business, The Complete Guide. So I think I'm going to stop it there. I hope you guys enjoyed just a quick jump into a few Udemy courses and my thoughts on them, just looking through the curriculums. Like I said, I'd like to do a more, maybe deeper dive on some of these, but I'll let you guys decide. So let me know in the comments below. Thanks.